Hello everybody, this is Mr. Spinelli. I'm going to give you a few quick tips on how to get started on your Desmos project. First thing you're going to want to do is open up a new tab and go to desmos.com slash calculator. Once that loads, the first thing you should do there is be sure that you are signed in. Now if you sign in through single sign-on first, you're going to want to click the sign in with Google and you will choose your school account and then I would recommend you name your graph so currently in the top left corner it will say untitled graph click that give your project a name I'm just gonna name mine Desmos project click save now throughout your project you're gonna to wanna to make sure you save several times now anytime you close the window Desmos is nice and will ask you if you want to save your project be sure to click yes if you made significant changes. So first thing I'm going to do is just change my window by hitting the settings button which is this wrench up in the top right corner and I'm going to set my x-axis to go from negative 10 to 10 with a step of 1 and my y-axis is also going to go from negative 10 to 10 with a step value of 1. You can make this anything you want. Some of you may want to make these bigger numbers if you don't want really want to work with decimals too much. Um, some of you may want to keep it really small and go from one to one and work with a lot of decimals. Now I'm going to turn off the minor grid lines so there's not as much going on. Um, and I'm going to turn projector mode on just so you can see things a little bit better. Or actually I'll turn that off so we can see all the values. Now I am going to graph some things. Um, we're going to work with our six parent functions. Linear functions, quadratic functions, cubic functions absolute value, exponential, and square root. The scoring rubric will go through how many of each of those you need at the minimum. Um, I'm just going to use a few to show you how things work. So I'm going to begin by typing a parabola. I'm going to use vertex forms. So I'm going to type y equals. To get parentheses I can press shift 9 or I can always open up this virtual keypad and I can find everything I need by toggling through the ABC button down here and the 1, 2, 3. So this will show me everything I need to work with. You can see the a squared here will give me the quadratic. If I click the a to the b power, I can type 3 for my cubic functions. I've got the absolute value of a here, so I can use my absolute value function. And then I've got the square root function. So I'll show a few of these in use as we go through this video. So I'm going to type parentheses by using my shift 9 and shift 0 on my keyboard, because I can do that more quickly. Otherwise, I would have clicked these parentheses here. And I'm going to type x minus 5 parentheses squared. So instead of clicking the square button, I can also hold the shift key and press 6. And then I'll type the number 2. Okay, That's another way, alternative, instead of hitting the a squared button. And I'm going to shift this function up to, let's say, 3. And actually, I'm going to move it over a little bit to the left by only going minus 3. And I'll shift it up a little bit more. So you can play around with this to get the things to go where you want them to go. Now, I don't want this whole parabola to show up because what I'm going to try to do is graph a face. So I actually want it to stop where y equals 6. So there's two ways that I can go about doing this. And I'll show you um, maybe an easier way first. I want this to graph everything below this curve. So if I go up here and I'm going to put curly brackets, um, one way you can do that is hold shift and press the keys next to the letter P. Or if you click this ABC button on the virtual keypad, you'll click this curly bracket. And I'm going to type Y less than 6 because I want everything below that line Y less than 6. Now I can click the shift button on the virtual keypad and then press the other curly bracket. And I can close that. I'm going to turn off that other graph. So now I've restricted that parabola to be less than Y equals 6. Now I'm going to select that and cut it just to show you what happens if it wasn't there. I'm going to paste it back. So that is graphing from um, everything from the bottom of that parabola at the vertex up to y equals 6. Now something that's nice is this is going to serve as my eyeball. So I'm actually going to select all this. I can either drag and select or I can hold the control button and press A. And then I'm going to control C, come down to the next line, control V. And I'm going to do the same thing but I'm going to shift this to the left. So now I've got some eyes on both sides. Um, and we'll play with the colors later. So again, I can shift these all I want to get them where I want to be. Maybe I want 3.5, I want some lopsided eyes. 
um, whatever I want to do. Now I'm going to put a nose in, and I'm going to use the absolute value function. I can either click this button, or I can type, uh, hold shift key, and press the button just above your enter key, and that will give me the absolute value bars, those vertical bars. And I'm going to type X, close it, and I'm actually going to turn this upside down and shift it up a bit. So there's my little nose, but clearly it's bigger than I want it to be. So let's say I want it to be above y equals 3. So again, I'll use my curly brackets, and I'll type y greater than 3. So now it just types a little upturned nose. Now if I want to get a little more creative here, I can put some nostrils in. So one thing you might want to use is coordinates. You might want to graph points. So if I use parentheses and type coordinates, I'm going to go to the left, negative 0.5, or I'm actually going to type that as a fraction. Negative 1, hit the division key, um, which I can hit there on the virtual keypad, right down here. Or I could have typed the backslash on my keyboard. I'm going to put negative 1 half. I'm going to put comma, let's go 3.5 is a little too high. So how about 3.1? So there's a nostril. and Maybe I actually want to move it closer to the x-axis. So I'm going to make it negative 1 fourth. Okay, so there's one nostril. I'll copy and paste that, except I'll shift it to the right. There's another nostril. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to add a mouth. So let's graph another parabola. Let's maybe do, actually, let's do a square root to do the top part of some lips. So I'll do the square root of x, and then I'm going to do the square root of negative x, so I get a horizontal reflection across the y-axis. So I'm going to do square root. Again, I can hit this button down here on the virtual keypad, or I can type SQRT, which I find to be a little bit quicker sometimes. So there's my lips. Now I want to do a parabola, so I'm going to maybe make it a little wider. So I'm going to put a one-fifth, put my parentheses. I actually don't need them because I don't, I'm not going to do a vertical shift, and I'm going to leave it like that. So there's a little... See, I'll shift it down just a touch. So there's my lips. Now, I want to cut these off at these points... So one way I could do it is by using my x-coordinates to represent the domain, restrict my domain between these two points. I think the easier way would be to say y is less than 1.962. So let's go ahead and sh I'll show you that. y is less than 1.962. And that kills two birds with one stone. Or I could have gone from negative 3.848 to positive 3.848. So let's see what that would look like if I wanted to do that. So I would type negative 3.848 is less than x is less than positive 3.848. So again, that's the same restriction just done in terms of x. So I've restricted my domain rather than restricting my range in terms of y. So you've got options. Now I'm going to copy and paste this onto each of my square roots. Now that's a little excessive because on this blue one, I only need x to be less than negative, or sorry, less than the positive 3.848 because of the given domain of the square root of x. And I only need x to be greater than negative 3.848 for the other one. But I could have kept the other one. It was just overkill. So there's a basic tutorial on how to graph a face. Um, again, I could add some pupils maybe at the point, let's say negative 3 comma, oh, I went a little too high, 5. And then I could again do that over at 3 comma 5. And that would be a basic face. Now, right now, I think it looks a little silly because the colors are all different. So one thing you can do is if you click and hold, you can change the color of a given part of your uh, piecewise function, if you will, because this is all just a piecewise function. It ends up not being a function because we wouldn't pass the vertical line test, though. Now, an easier way to change all the colors at once is to click your Edit List button. Okay, if you click the Edit List, now I can go through, I don't have to long press to click these things. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to make the eyes blue, I'm going to make the nose black, I want my nostrils to both be black, I'm going to make the mouth red for the lips. So I go through and I change all these and I'm just clicking, I'm not clicking and holding. And then I want the, eye, the pupils of the eye to both be black, and maybe I'll make them a circle so they're open and maybe a little creepier. That's up to you to decide. So there's X's, there's O's, lots of things you want to do. 
And maybe you want to turn the drag feature on because you want to move this later. So that, that's up to you. Um, and then there's always the undo button. You can press Control Z or you can click the undo button. Okay? So I actually want to turn the drag feature off of this. And it won't move, and now I'm going back to so everything's the same. So I'm going to click the save button. Okay? So my project is now saved. I can open it back up by going to this little drop down, the sandwich button up here in the top left corner. If I click open graph and choose Desmos project, I would be able to get back to this. Okay? Now, that's all the basic features you probably need. If I go back to the wrench, I could turn off my axis numbers in the grid, my x axis and y axis, and there's my face in all its glory. But I'm going to go back to it and show you how to make a few more changes to shade everything in and perhaps add some more color to your picture. So instead of doing a standard equation, I'm actually going to turn this into an inequality. So for my first eye here to the right, I'm just going to zoom in on it so we can do some more magic with it. I'm going to make it say y is greater than or equal to. So if I type the greater than symbol, I hold shift and press the period button. Or I can always pull up that virtual keyboard and get the greater than or equal to. But I like to do it from the keyboard because it's usually quicker. So shift, period, then to hit the equals button. That makes it greater than or equal to. Now I've shaded everything in there. If I didn't have my restriction, recall that this parabola would just go on forever, up and up and up, never end. Okay? I don't want that though. I want my restriction. I can do y is less than 6. Now, if I want to actually outline the top part of this, I can get a little more creative than just having this restriction. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to cut all of this, move it in front, change the direction of my symbols, and I've now used my restriction. Instead of putting my restriction in the curly brackets, I've actually restricted y between two different functions, bounded below by the parabola that opens upwards. The concave up parabola is my lower bound because I have less than or equal to symbols and my double-sided inequality. And then I'm bounded above by 6. So I'm just going to do the other one the other way so you can get an idea of the difference. Okay? Some of you may like this line on top. Some of you may not. This, these two equations in line 1 and 2 show the difference. Here I've got an inequality on both sides, double-sided inequality, compound inequality as we would call them, and then here I just have a single inequality with a restriction on my range. So you've got options. Okay. So again, if I wanted to color this, uh, sorry, this absolute value for my nose, I could say y is less than or equal to because I want to shade below. Now, when I get to the mouth, I'm going to shade below my two square root functions, so I want to do less than or equal to. But notice that I run into a little issue. I want them to stop coloring at the parabola. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy the restrictions from my parabola. Or I'm going to leave that, actually. I'm going to copy the parabola, though. Okay, so I'm selecting it, Control C, and I'm going to add another restriction in another set of curly brackets. Let's see if this works. I want y to be greater than or equal to that parabola. And what do you know? It shades only inside the lips. So if I change that other square root to less than or equal to, you can see that I only have the one restriction. I want x to be less than, or sorry, x greater than this negative 3.8. 848 where it intersected the parabola. But if I copy and paste that restriction from the other lip, now I've got it in both spots and I've shaded my lips. And now I've got a nice little face. Now another thing you can consider doing, and again I may consider making a video with more advanced options, but you consider adding some animation. So this is an advanced option. If you're already satisfied with what you've seen, maybe start playing around and see what you can come up with. But I'm going to set my eyes. I'm going to actually make my eyes the same now. I'll change this to a plus. Okay, so both of my eyes are the same. Okay, same definition. I'm actually going to change where the eyes are, the, the pupils. I want to have googly eye pupils. So I'm going to make this negative A and 
B. And I'm going to add a slider for this, this pupil. You can see the pupil down here. If I change the A value, it moves it left and right. If I change the B value, it moves it up and down. Okay, so I'm going to do that for both eyeballs. I'm going to make one negative A comma B, and the other one have X value of A and a Y value of B. So you can see that as I change this, the eye moves around. Now I want to be clever on how I do this, so I want to actually keep it within this range, you know, within a tight little circle. So I'm going to click the slider, and I want my X value to only go from negative three and a half, sorry, from three and a half, two and a half, to three and a half, and I'm going to change the step size to be, say, 0 0.1, so it'll just barely move. And I hit enter, so now the A value can only go within this window, so it won't go any further to the left or right for each of those eyeballs. And they notice they move mirrored to each other. You can get clever in how you define these. Now B, I want to be within this range just around five, so I'm going to go from four and a half to five and a half, and I'm going to make that step size 0 0.1, and hit enter. And now I can move the eyeballs within this range. Now here's where it gets fun. I'm going to hit the play button on both of these sliders and my eyeballs are going to just move around like googly eyes. And then if I click this little button down here, I can change how fast it does it. And if I want it to just repeat in one direction, only go once, or play indefinitely in one direction forever. I like to keep it in the loop forward and backwards though since I'm doing googly eyes. But I'm going to make it move a little bit faster in the x direction. Come down here, make it move a little bit faster in the y direction. So now I've got googly eyes. So at this point, I think I've showed you enough of the basics and a little bit of the advanced features for you to begin creating. Good luck, have fun, and remember to save often. And remember that you can always undo features. Click this edit list button to change the features of your colors. Um, you can even get dashed lines and things like that. Um, remember, you can change the, the grid to show different amounts. If you want to see minor grid lines, some of you may want to turn all of this off when you're done. Some of you may want to leave it on. It depends on what the theme of your project is. But again, as you change things, be sure to save things. Always make sure you're logged in and working on your most recent project, however you have named it. And be sure to give it a clever name that fits the theme of your project. Good luck, have fun, and be sure to ask your teacher questions if you have any.